four different groups and Jared is going to represent uh, the next group so we'll take it from here. So uh, I'm in Leslie and Tomas's group and so is Juan at uh, MIT and um, so one of the things that we're going to be doing with the PR2 is uh, hierarchical uh, task and motion planning and basically what that means is uh, you've got this complicated environment you want to accomplish some high-level tasks and uh, you know, you don't want to have to reason about joint angles directly. You want to do things at a higher level first and then later on uh, translate that into um, lower level actions. Uh, so if you consider how to put away the groceries, then, um, you know, you have to find 
the objects and uh, do some tidying and cleaning. And it's difficult because you have a high, config high dimensional configuration space and a very long planning horizon. Um, and so the, the approach that uh, we're investigating is to uh, be aggressively hierarchical, which means that we will commit to a plan at a high level first and start executing it. And then if we find out later on that part of it is infeasible or suboptimal, then we can replan and, and take corrective action. So clearly, this doesn't work in all situations, like you know, if you're dealing with juggling uh, wine glasses, and if you drop one, then it's going to break. But uh, it, for a lot, of, a lot of tasks, then uh, you don't have to worry too much about the side effects. And um, if, you, if you know which, which tasks those are, which ones you have to worry about the side effects, you can build that into the, to the planning as well. So there's a movie here. And so this is just one simple example of uh, a robot in simulation tidying up a room using this, uh, this type of approach. So I'm actually um, really interested in the perception part of all this. And um, previously, I've worked a lot with just monocular images. So as a, as a task, can you guys tell me where the grape juice is in this image? You see the apple juice, but can you see grape juice anywhere? Something that could be grape juice? Behind the apple juice, yeah. So there's this little, this little patch here. I mean, it, it, it's kind of hidden from view, but if you look at it, you kind of see this distinguishing shape and the lid there, and so you think that could be, could be grape juice, right? So, um, I don't know, just believe me. <laughs> but you can uh, imagine that, that, that uh, picking out occluded objects like this could be quite difficult with uh, vision alone, but if we have multiple sensory inputs, you know, 3D point clouds as well as appearance, then uh, things like this could be much easier. And as a final motivation, uh, this is what I. This is the robot that I did my master's work on. So uh, we're looking forward to using a system that's a much better improvement <laughs> than this. You can see we used uh, rubber bands to pick up objects before. So, <laughs> all right, that's it. Thank you.